<clears throat> well, good afternoon again, Facebook. This is Prophetess Rhea A. Doswell. So no matter if you are on Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube, wherever it is that the Lord has you, I am once again Prophetess Rhea A. Doswell, founder of Sela Prophetic Ministries. Today's date is October 4th, and I'm going to give you the second word that the Lord gave me um, is stewardship. That's what I heard the Lord say. Uh, if you have not looked on my page, there's a very serious word that the Lord gave me. He wanted me to separate uh, both of the words because one of them deals with stewardship and the other one deals with war and what we need to be praying against as a body. So I'm going to go ahead. I won't uh, be on here long, just real quickly. Someone needs to hear this about stewardship because the Lord spoke this to me earlier today. So First of all, I want to tell you that stewardship, this is one of the definitions that I found, and I'm like, this is powerful. It means conducting, supervising. It means managing something, okay, especially with careful responsibility and management, something to be entrusted with, uh, someone who has care, stewardship of something. In Genesis uh, 39, 4, 6, it says, so Joseph found favor in his sight and became his personal servant. And he made him an overseer over his house and all that he owned, he put it in charge. He put him in charge. And it came about that from the time he made him overseer in his house and over all that he owned, the Lord had blessed the Egyptian's house on account of Joseph. Thus, the Lord's blessing was upon all that he owned and in that house. Stewardship has everything to do with why God blesses leaders, especially those of you who are in the fivefold ministry. Apostle Paul was one of the most amazing leaders. He went from, he was basically what we would classify as a serial killer because he killed more than three people. And he did that under a a position as being a, a Roman soldier. And he thought what he was doing was a justifiable act unto God because of the paganistic beliefs. Um, but one of the reasons why Apostle Paul was entrusted with the stewardship to create one of the most effective leadership teams that expanded global missionary outreach, it was because in stewardship, to be excellent at it, you have to first fear and reverence who the Lord was. And that's what Apostle Paul had as a leader. It wasn't that the task was more important than his reverence and fear for who God was. Because it is when a leader fears and reverences God that you understand that the people that have been entrusted into your care actually belong to God. And that's one of the reasons why Apostle Paul was the type of leader that he was. He was what we call a transformational leader. He was a servant type leader. He even uh, operated as what we call an adaptive form of leadership. What is that? A person who has the ability to be able to relate to different diverse groups of people, but has a skill to be able to bring those groups of people into a common goal. And that was one of the responsibilities that Apostle Paul had because he had to reach the Pharisees and the Sadducees. He understood Judaism because he practiced it. But he also had to be able to minister to the Gentiles. And guess who else Apostle Paul had to combat? A Roman Empire, Emperor Neural. So he was gifted and he was skilled and he was successful at what he was called to do because Apostle Paul understood management. Management is not about dictatorship. Management is not about being superior. No, the greatest leaders among you are what? They are servants first. And how do you effectively serve people? You don't serve people the way that God wants you to when God is not a priority in your life. So in other words, if you want to be trusted with expansion, you want to be trusted for God to grow your ministry or grow whatever it is that the Lord has called you to, you have to understand the principles and the foundation of what stewardship is. I want you guys to think about, let's use this analogy. Think about people that have a call to business, whether it's a beauty salon, um, it could be a clothing store, um, it could be a technology center, whatever. And you want God to bless what it is that you feel called to do. But when you lack stewardship, why would God bless your business endeavors? Why would God bless your ministerial pursuits when you lack stewardship? 
and the beginning of stewardship for the believer is that God has to be the priority in all that you do. Why? Because in stewardship, in ministry, and in business, God is always going to be on the forefront of every decision that you make. Does it advance his kingdom? Does it cause people to grow? Is this a blessing that will enhance the knowledge of people in their walk with God or, or maybe what they feel called to learn in? Stewardship begins when you prioritize your relationship with God because it is God through the work of the Holy Spirit that actually teaches a leader how to properly manage people. How to properly manage your affairs, whether they are personal, whether they are ministerial related, whether they are business. That stems from stewardship, a balance, and that can only come and you only can be successful at it when you have a healthy relationship with God. And when you understand that every gift that he's given you, whether your gift is in your intellectual cognitive skills, whether it is um, natural talents, whatever it is, whether it's the type of mantle or an anointing that God has allowed you to operate in, when you understand that it comes from him, you can properly steward your gifts. And that's going to show you how to steward uh, working with people and the assignment. So who are some people in scripture that lack stewardship? Saul. Saul. Remember, Saul is a man-made king. Remember, the people didn't want Samuel to rule, even though Samuel had been the most ethical leader. He was a judge and he was a king and he also was a prophet. And some theologians classify him as, as an apostle of the Old Testament. But we don't really see that terminology until we get to the New Testament, even though it did exist in the Old Testament. But Samuel was one of the most credible leaders. But the people, they discriminated against Samuel. And what they did was that they practiced what we call ageism discrimination, is that when a person gets a certain age, you don't feel that they're capable of doing certain tasks. So they demanded that they, Israel have a new king. And I remember Samuel's plea. He said, have I not been ethical? Have I not served you? Have I not been fear, uh, uh, fair in my dealings with you? But... Nevertheless, Samuel yielded to God and God said, no, they wanted a new king, so give them one. And Samuel did. He anointed Saul because the Lord told them, told him to anoint Saul. And guess what? Saul did not understand stewardship. Saul got caught in pride and arrogancy where he wanted to do things his way. And God's agenda was not the first priority, but Saul's was. And because of that, Saul decided to disobey God. And he did it on more than one occasion. And the disobedience was so severe that the Lord stripped Saul and would not hear his prayers anymore. And Saul, you know the story, go and read it in First and Second Samuel. He ends up seeking the witch of Endor because the Lord would not speak to him anymore. Isn't that something that... A person's lack of stewardship could lead them down such a dark path that they no longer are communicating with God and God is no longer communicating with them. That's like a, a, the Lord giving people over to a reprobate mind. Do you know what a reprobate mind is? It is giving people over to what they want to do. And God takes his hands off of you and he allows you to experience what you wanted because you didn't want to listen to what God had to say. And there are many people in ministry and in business that are not properly stewarding over the assignments that God has given them. And they abuse positions of power in decision making, in behaviors, and how people are mistreated. Oh, I hear you, Lord. There are some people in the body of Christ who are on YouTube, you're on Facebook, you're on Instagram, and you intentionally brought wolves in sheep's clothing into the Lord's house in front of his people. Some of you knew the reputation of tainted prophets. You knew that they were whoremongers. You knew that they were thieves and they were robbers of God's tithe. You knew this, but you brought them in. And you brought them in because you wanted to draw a crowd. Because a crowd represented more tithe in your house. And because you brought these people, my God, into his house, there were some people that were victimized. There were some people that were taken advantage of. 
And you are no different, the Lord says, than Hophanes and Phanes, the sons of Eli. I am telling you right now, as a prophetess of God, and some of you already have begun to experience the judgment in your house, you need to repent. You need to repent for bringing that Hophanes and Phanes spirit up into the house of the Lord. Do you know that the era of Eli's sons, the Bible says, that when the people were, were coming into the temple, that Hophanes and Phanes would fondle them. What is fondle? It means sexually assault. And there are some of you, you brought foul prophets, foul apostles into your house. Some who were flirtatious with women who were vulnerable, who were not delivered and because of interactions that they had with some of those leaders they fell into sexual sin god says i'm looking at you the way i looked at hophanes and phanes and what was the judgment that came against the sons of eli the bible says that the lord called eli's sons wicked they are wicked and if you study it theologically they happen to be the descendants of cain and eli Eli was a revered, credible prophet, but the Bible says that his light grew dim. Light meaning his fire, his oil, his ability to be able to hear strategically from the Lord. It grew dim. And I believe that one of the reasons why Eli's fire went out, it didn't go all the way out, but it got demolished, was because Eli, as a, a revered prophet in the Old Testament, he did not correct the behavior of his sons. And in the end, it cost him. Hophanes and Phanes were killed. And God said, I'm going to kill them. Oh, there's a side of God that people don't want to hear. And it is truth. Yes, he is the giver of life. And guess what? He is also the taker of it. He takes his breath. They died. And do you know how Eli died after finding out about the Ark of the Covenant had been stolen? The Bible says, and I believe because Eli was petrified, because the Ark was holy. The Bible says he fell off his chair and he broke his neck. So whoever you are, whatever Christian leader you are, you know you brought contaminated prophets and apostles up in your house. And they are foul. And they ended up affecting his people. You better repent. Oh, you better repent. Because he God is looking at you once again, like he looked at Hophanes and Phanes. Mm, Jesus, thank you, Father God. Remember that word? And people mocked it on social media. But remember what the Lord told you. He told you this in 2021. Oh, we have reached a time. You're going to stop mocking God's real prophets because what you're going to see is see his real prophets, his remnant prophets. What we have been given comes to pass. And that is the difference between false prophets. You're not a prophet because you read someone's social security. You're not a prophet because you knew some, someone's address. How foolish and silly. No, 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 no. We don't have to watch the news. No, we tell you what we heard our father say, and then it comes on the news. And then you hear about it. Remember, thank you, Lord, he's bringing this back for those who follow the ministry. Remember I said in a very, very vivid dream, it was terrifying. It was so terrifying where the Lord allowed me to be in a van. And what this van was doing, you guys remember this, this was 2015, this was 2016. And in the van, the van was driving around at nighttime and it was looking for vulnerable women because it was looking for women to kidnap and to traffic. And what I kept seeing was African-American and Hispanic women. And remember the warning went out and I went out in a clarion call and I was so mad as a prophetess because I couldn't even get people that I had poured into their life. I had interpreted dreams. I had given direct prophetic words for marriages, for businesses. I'm talking about it came to pass. And when this happened, I had pleaded. And I usually don't ever ask people to share. I let you be led by the spirit of God but it was such an urgent word because I said this devil he has comprised something and it's all over this nation these secret um, organizations and they are going to target African-American and Hispanic women 
and we have got to be alert. The Lord allowed me to sit in a van and it was terrifying in the dream because I could see this spirit and how it was mobilizing, looking for people even driving around by themselves. And remember at the time the Lord said to tell women, you cannot travel by yourself because they are targeting. And remember a part of that prophecy that the Lord had given, excuse me, you guys, <coughs> Healing, healing in the name of Jesus. Remember part of that prophecy, the Lord had said, no, there is a, a huge organization that part of these kidnappings of Hispanic women and African-American women, they are harvesting their organs. And it is being funded on a huge scale. Remember that? Let me ask you something. For those that follow the ministry, do you remember the stories that came out after the word came forward? Remember that? Remember the vans? Remember they were pulling up in white vans and different color vans? Remember that? So listen to me. For those of you, you have contaminated our father's house. You have brought in false prophets and false apostles. You know these people are not right. I am telling you, as a prophetess of God, you need to repent. Thank you, Holy Ghost. He just brought this back. Remember, I went off track, but he brought me back. Remember, the Lord gave a warning that he was getting ready to judge black leaders. And remember, the Lord said very specifically, he said, Rhea, he said, the orange jumpsuits are coming. And I'm like, the orange jumpsuits. OK, Papa, he said, the orange jumpsuits are coming. Where are their orange jumpsuits in the jails? And remember, the father said, I'm going to strip the prosperity pimps. I'm going to take even the money that they have used for lavish lifestyles, for vacation pay, for even the clothes, the attire. I am going to strip because they have robbed my house. Remember that? Did you not see that one situation where those pastors in Michigan, they were trafficking that girl, passing her along to different black pastors? Remember what the judge said? Even though they never had a criminal history. The judge said, I'm going to sentence you to 100 years as an example. And that's exactly what happened. And I am telling you now, if you know some clergy and you know that they have brought contaminate, oh, there is a prophet, my God, he is going to be stripped before the people. He is a whore mongering prophet. And God is going to strip him openly. He did not tell me to release names. He is going to strip this man openly. He is a whore munging prophet. And watch the hand of the Most High God. I don't know who we think we are. Who say that you're in the fivefold ministry. That you actually think that you can come up in God's house. And do whatever you want to do and have the audacity because you will not get delivered and you will not get set free that you can contaminate his people and not think that the Lord God Almighty is not going to deal with you. Yes, he is. Oh, yes, he is. Before he judges the world severely. He always will judge his house first, but it's coming. It's coming. Be a leader that understands stewardship according to the word of God. Have what Apostle Paul had, which was fear and reverence for who the Lord was. Because he understood grace and he understood forgiveness because he had been delivered from so much. And he served God with a zealous fire. And he was trusted to train students, to commission them to go forward, even after his death. Be a faithful steward like Samuel. Serve people and give them the very best that you can. Be integral, have character, be honest. Don't allow the enemy to pollute who you are and the oil and the fire that you've been entrusted with. It's a precious thing to be entrusted with God's fire and his oil, but it'll cost you. It costs you something to stand up in front of a pastor, a bishop, an apostle, 
and you know that the team is crooked and wrong to be able to say, you know what, man or woman or God. No, I'm sorry. I cannot come in agreement with that. You're actually wrong. How do you do that? You have to fear God first. I want to use an analogy that our world just witnessed. And it's so sad because it could have been prevented. I want to talk about George Floyd because there is such an analogy with these officers that are still being sentencing. And because they elevated one officer at a certain point, they violated conviction and they violated their own conscience. Can you imagine what would have taken place if one of them officers knowing that this man was crying out, I can't breathe, I can't breathe, please let me up. If one of them would have stood up and said, I'm not doing this. The man said he can't breathe and push the officer up off of his neck. George Floyd would still be among us, but I want you to pay attention to the behavior. They took a superior officer that was committing a live murder on TV and they would not stand against him knowing that his actions were blatantly wrong. That's the analogy I want to use in the body of Christ. Is how many apostles and prophets are on the neck of God's people and you know that they are predator prophet. And you know that there are women in your congregation who have not been delivered, who have not been set free. And now he's trying to hook up with them. I know it's a serious analogy to use, but that's how serious. There are people that get hurt by clergy. Get this in your spirit. They walk away from God. They end up going to the occult. Some of them have been delivered from drugs and alcohol. And because of the hurt that they experience under the hands of leaders that say that they represent Jesus, they don't ever come back to the body of Christ. I want you to understand how serious this is to the Lord. Can you imagine that soul never finding their way back? And they end up leaving the earth and they're not right with God. What happens to their soul in eternity? That is how serious stewardship is. That is how serious God is getting ready to deal with leaders. Because we are vessels and we point people towards Jesus or because of our lack of stewardship and management and supervising ethically, we can steer someone away from the cross. Mm, Jesus. Remember the Lord said. Don't fear. Man that you see. No you ought to fear me. The one who has the power and the authority. To decide when you wake up. And when you will not wake up again. So I want you to get that. Be faithful. In stewardship. In ministry. In business. Be faithful when other people are not. Stand up when you need to stand up. Address when you need to address. Correct when you need to correct. Anything else, Father God? Anything else I'm missing um, for your people? Anything else? No, that is all that he gave me. Oh, when you get a chance, read 1 Samuel um, 2.15. Thank you, Holy Ghost. The other leaders that operated in faithful stewardship is Daniel and Joseph and Jonathan. And Jonathan is a perfect illustration that did not exert the authority of his own father Saul against what was doing right because he feared God. And in the end, even after Jonathan's death, his family member needed the redemption of David. And because of Jonathan's stewardship, his family was blessed. Do you know that if we have excellent stewardship before the Lord in serving people, that that could affect generations of our children and our children's children. So that's all he gave me. God bless you. Stay in the word of God. Stay prayed up. And remember, all prophecy is not for everyone. This is a corporate word. Try it in the fire of logos and in your own spirit by the Holy Spirit. Okay? Bless you in the Lord.